Hey kids, it's Mr. and Fla here at last. Summer has come, look at this. It's uh, 15 degrees and sunny. Ideal temperatures to do a bike test. And today, absolutely thrilled to say I'm out on a big old maxi scoot. This is the Suzuki Bergman Executive 650. If you want to know about this big scoot, then stick around and stay tuned. So, scooters there, what the heck's that all about? Well. I thought that until uh, about eight months ago when I first went on a scooter. Uh, I'd always thought there would be nothing interesting about scooters. They weren't fun at all, they are just means of transport. And whilst they are means of transport, they're not bikes that enthusiast motorcyclists are likely to buy, they are actually an awful lot of fun when compared to four wheels. Now, uh, the first scoot I went on was actually the Yamaha uh, T-Max 400. Uh, and it was a great bike, really enjoyed it, and it's kind of uh, opened my eyes to scooters, so really thrilled today that I'm on this, which has uh, possibly been the market leader for maxi scoots, or maxi scooters, for the last few years. This is the uh, Suzuki 650 Bergman Executive, or it might be the 650 Executive Bergman, anyway, don't know which way around it is, but it's uh, Suzuki's flagship scooter, if you like, and uh, they've been making this for ages now, and uh, although this is a 2018 model, I don't think much has changed on it for years. And frankly, why do you need to if you get something right? So jumping on this bike, the first thing that uh, strikes you is just, as is the case with the most scooters, is just how comfortable it is. It's got a massive, great padded seat, really low, so you can get your feet to the floor very easily. The handlebars are really lazily set back and nice and wide. Uh, and it does feel kind of armchair comfortable. This particular machine has a little uh, back support uh, sort of around the lumbar area of your back and to start with I didn't quite like that but actually having now ridden this for quite a few miles uh, I'm, I'm sort of appreciating what that does for you. It just keeps, means you don't get any backache on the thing basically. It's, uh, it really is a super comfortable place to be. The next thing that strikes you when you're riding the Bergman is just how easy it is to ride. It's got this uh, 638cc parallel twin engine and uh, the way the transmission's hooked up just feels lovely. It's just got loads of go. It feels like more than a 650 to me, and there's none of that feeling that uh, I've noticed on some cheaper scooters, like you're driving, riding a normal bike but with the clutch slipping. This just feels like you've got a good direct link to the drive all the time. And if you want to give it some beans, it really does go as well. I'll find a faster road a bit later in the uh, review and show you. But it's easy to ride fast and it's easy to ride slow. I mean, here I am doing uh, 30 miles an hour in a sort of a suburb. And, uh, well, there is no easier bike to ride. All you have to think about is where you're going and what you're doing. You don't have to worry about changing gears or anything else. It's all done for you. This is the next thing that's great about it. It's a big old weighty bike. I'll go through the specs when we do the walk around. But slow speed control on this is so easy. It's incredible. Because it's a scooter and the architecture of the engine is such that... Uh, the engine is kept very low down in the bike, it means the centre of gravity is very low and that in turn means it's just not an issue to manhandle around at all. So when you're at a standstill like this, there's no feeling or worry that you're going to drop the bike. It feels no heavier than a bicycle when you're at a standstill like that. So if you are worried about weight and the, you know, worried about maybe dropping a bike, don't have that sense of fear with these things because you just won't feel like that. Now, I'm very lucky because I've got this bike for the next few weeks. Suzuki have let me borrow this as a long-term uh, scooter review. I've never done uh, a long-term max long maxi-scoot review before, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know the bike better. And one of the things I definitely want to do when I do the long-term review, if I can, is uh, convince one of my family to get on the back because this uh, looks like it's got a really comfortable pillion seat on, uh, again, with a backrest, and I think it's just going to be a really comfortable place for a passenger to go. So, uh, you know, if there's uh, you and one other and you want to go touring or something, then I think this would be great for that. And of course, it being a scooter means uh, it's super practical in terms of storage. This thing has oodles of it underneath the seat, which I'll show you again when we do the walk around. There's loads of space. You can actually get two full face helmets under the seat, uh, as well as Suzuki have put lots of cubby holes here. So you've got a cubby hole either side here that you can put stuff in. And this big wide bit at the bottom here is a massive, basically a glove box, um, lockable one as well. So you can keep stuff in there as well. And there's quite a lot of space in there. So brilliant from a practical point of view. It also has an immobiliser, so when you leave the leave the bike, if you're in town or something, you've got a bit of uh, peace of mind, and then it has got an electronic immobiliser, although of course, let's face it, all motorcycles can be stolen these days, it seems. And then while we're on the practical uh, front, the other great thing that this has got 
again in common with many scooters is this massive frontal area so you're completely shielded from the elements now I rode this uh, in a really heavy downpour the other day for about 100 miles and uh, I have to say well, it wasn't a joy to ride <laughs> but it was the best of any motorcycle I've ever ridden for protection the rain just kind of shot off me and uh, and I didn't get cold it was a very cold day it was about seven degrees uh, and uh, all was well I mean allied to the brilliant protection on it it's got heated grips and heated seats front and rear as standard so again if you're just after a comfortable ride well there is nothing more comfortable than this that I've ever ridden I don't think it reminds me actually, riding wise, riding position and the, and the ease of which you can ride it, of riding the big old BMW RT, the big touring bike. Handling wise, it is a little bit different to a uh, conventional motorcycle if that's what you're used to. You do have to muscle it around corners a little bit, I think because it's probably got quite a long wheelbase. So you have to be positive about steering it, uh, which is far much to get used to it. But to start with, when you first jump on, on your first roundabout or whether, whatever, it can catch you out, so be wary of that. But once you're used to it, you realise actually how light and agile the thing feels. It's super manoeuvrable. Not a great place to demonstrate that here, but the, you know, you can really shut this about. There is. Uh, absolutely no sense of heft about the bike even though as I say it is a heavy machine. The mirrors on here work brilliantly they're mounted down below there which is a position I'm not used to it's a sort of position that you see on some of the big old police bikes and stuff but actually you get a great view behind you behind your hands you're not looking at your shoulders or your elbows they work a real treat and they have a great little feature as well for if you want to do some filtering if you press this button here they fold in so you can get through narrow gaps. Absolute winner. Why don't all touring bikes do that? The other fun little thing uh, that they've added to the bike, which again, I don't know why more motorcycles don't have this, is for this big old screen here. It is uh, power driven. It's an electrically adjustable screen. Uh, and that's done on the button over here on the right. So I'm in the fully up position now. If I hit the button, oh sorry, that's fully up and that's fully down. Now the only problem with that, although I like the fact that it's electronic, fully up, fully down, the only issue with it is, as you probably noticed, there's not an awful lot of change between the two heights. It maybe goes up and down five, six inches, something like that, which I'm always telling my wife is an awful big distance, but uh, actually, for a screen, that's not a huge change, but uh, not to worry, at least it's got some adjustability and it's uh, easy enough to do. In the down position, I'm looking over the screen and that's absolutely fine. Uh, and I'm getting a bit of wind turbulence off the top of my head. Nothing dirty, I can feel that it just sort of hits the top of my helmet. Uh, I'm five foot eight, so uh, I'm in sort of a bubble of calm. But as I say, you are aware of the wind noise coming off the top of your head. If you put the screen fully up, I'm now completely costed from all wind. Uh, it's going way over the top of me. And I imagine if you were six foot, you'd probably be all right as well. The downside with this though, is I'm now looking through the screen. I don't like that personally. Um, in fact, if I sit perfectly comfortable, this line here of the screen is right in the middle of where I'm looking, so I find that a bit distracting. So for me, I'm just keeping the screen down and then I look over it, that works better for me. The brakes on it work really nicely. They're as sharp as any brakes I've used on any motorcycle. Suspension on it, absolutely fine when you're in uh, situations like this in the urban area or commute. The suspension is completely adequate, but when you get uh, a bit of a hop on, particularly if you're going to go over some of these nightmare potholes that we've got this year in Blighty, or indeed these speed humps, you do quickly notice the limitations of the suspension and it becomes what I would describe as crashy. Not much you can do about that. I assume the suspension is quite budget. And that is the, the one thing about the sort of handling and the that side of things that uh, I think lets the bike down a little bit. So this is the natural habitat of these uh, scooters of course, going around town and the urban environment where they become just into their element, super easy to ride. Now, there's a bus lane here, I'm not sure what the rules are around here for whether I'm allowed to be in them, I assume I can. Nice work by the uh, Polo, luckily the brakes on here are fantastic. And it does of course have ABS, it being a large engined bike destined for Europe. So if you do have to yank the anchors on quickly, you can do so no problem. The other thing I quite like about the uh, big old Bergman is this dash layout. Now scooters tend to do their dashes, don't they? A bit like a car, and that looks no different. In fact, I'm sure I've had cars with lesser dashboards on than that. What I like about this though is it's very clear to read. Let's just nip round here, I think. And it's got everything you need, including a proper fuel gauge.
just here on the left, which is so often lacking from bikes. On the subject of fuel, this thing seems super frugal. I picked this up a few days ago, I've done about uh, 150 miles on it so far, it was a full tank when I picked it up. And so far I've only lost look, one bar on the fuel there. I imagine it might go down a bit quicker soon, but uh, I think you're looking at something like 65 miles per gallon on this, which isn't bad for such a big old engine I suppose. I'll see as I uh, ride the bike a bit more over time exactly what the frugality is like. Right, a couple of things I'd like to do. One is uh, find a suitable spot to uh, give you a walk around, talk you through the spec of this bike and show you some of those practical features I've talked about. Uh, and then also I'd like to get her on a bit of a faster road as well, just to see how she does at high speed. So stick around and stay tuned. Right, let's just uh, pull in up here. This is a little uh, development of flats that I know quite well. Let's just pull in around the back here, see if there's an empty spot I can uh, show you around the bike, talk you through the spec. Alright, like all scooters, uh, I don't think the engine will run with the stand down, I'll just check that now. There you go, no. So you put the stand down and the engine quits for safety reasons obviously, uh, because if the bike was running and you uh, turned the throttle of course it would be off, because you never put a scooter in neutral. So there we go, so uh, that's that. And this is what she looks like. I mean, a massive old beast. Look at the length of it. Reminds me a bit of um, a beluga whale, that front end. In fact, if you look at the bike from the very front, it doesn't look that dissimilar to a touring motorcycle, does it? In fact, if you had that behind, you might think that's what it was to the uh, uninitiated eye. But uh, otherwise, it just strikes me as a really, really long bike. Oh, let's just turn that little camera off while we're doing this bit. And, uh, but it's not unattractive, but it's also not super attractive as well, let's not kid ourselves. Anyway, let me get the uh, phone out and I'll talk you through the spec in the usual way. Right, there we go. Here she is then, the uh, Suzuki Bergman 650 Executive, or is it the uh, Bergman Executive 650, something like that. Anyway, this particular model in white, I think uh, the white colour probably doesn't do it any favours, but... Uh, I think, uh, I think it comes in black as well, which I think would be a better option. Let me just show you some of those little practical features before I talk you through the specs, in fact. So here we go, look, here's, the, uh, here's all the cubby holes down here I was telling you about. Uh, in fact, if I, I can open that one there, look. So there's one there, with plenty of room for your, your phone or your sandwiches. Another one similar this side get your phone or sandwiches in there. Down here we've got this lockable sort of glove box affair. Look at that, amazing, complete with the charge uh, socket thingy down there so you can charge your phone up as you go along. How practical is that? And then if you put the key in here, turn it that way I think, you could open the seat up here, this gargantuan seat that the bike's got. If he says, let's try it again. There we go, that sounds more like it, took a bit of doing, there we are. <laughs> so just for demonstration purposes, I've popped my uh, showy full face helmet in there. And in fact, uh, Suzuki say you can get uh, two full face helmets in here. Uh, I've not tried that, but certainly it looks like there's plenty of room for another in there. My show is a large helmet as well. And underneath here, you've also got a light if you're so inclined. And this is all held up by this uh, hydraulic strut. So super practical, if a bit of a pain to get into until you work out how to do it. And that just goes back down again. Alright, so that's that. Everything off. Alright, so to the specs then. I already mentioned that it's got a 638cc uh, parallel twin engine. It uh, puts out 55 PS at 7000 RPM, so that's uh, something like 54 brake horsepower. And uh, torque-wise, 62 newton meters of torque at 5000 RPM. That's 46 foot-pounds in the old money. And brakes-wise, show you the front. I'm out of breath now after all that seat game. Here we are, twin discs at the front, and they've got, even though they look quite small, they've got amazing stopping power. I uh, don't know the type of calipers, etc., but they look like they're four piston pots on the back there. They work fine. Suspension on the front, telescopic coil spring, oil damped rear. Suzuki says swing arm type coil spring. Uh, in fact, we can have a look at it here. It's your normal sort of uh, scooter setup. My word, I'm going to have to do some cleaning on here soon. Okay, seat height 760mm, so very low, and uh, well that looks wide, it's obviously got that narrow front end, so I can get my feet flat on the deck at 5 foot 8, no problem at all. Let's just open the visor, get some air in here, that's better. Uh, the weight, I said she's a heavy old girl, 277 kilograms wet, so you know, a third of a tonne, which is amazing, it just does not feel anywhere like that. 
that makes it one of the one of the heaviest bikes I've ever ridden and I have to say it feels like one of the lightest so uh, do not let that weight figure put you off the Suzuki Bergman oh and that's that little um, rear um, backrest that I think for pillions would be absolutely amazing and pillions also get uh, a foot board as opposed to a, a, a peg so again a comfortable place for pillions to be I would imagine tank capacity 15 litres uh, so that's 3.3 UK gallons claims 60.5 miles per gallon so about a 200 mile range and that's about a 15% uh, increase in efficiency according to Suzuki over the old model uh, electronics wise uh, it's got uh, drive and power modes, just the two, I fiddle between them, the drive one is sort of uh, the economic one if you like, power modes to me just seems to make the revs go more, can't feel much difference between riding them so I wouldn't uh, <laughs> uh, hold too much uh, a score for those. Uh, it's also got optional manual shifting, no idea how that's supposed to work on a bike that's got a continuously variable drive, this has got it on here, I'll show you the, the buttonage to do it, it's just here look, uh, the buttons for shifting, I've not bothered trying it because I don't, really don't see the point. Well, I'm talking about the switch gear, it's all very nice stuff this, it feels high quality, typical Suzuki stuff, uh, and that's the screen one, the screen uh, adjust there up and down, uh, very nice indeed. Oh, and there's that dash that I uh, enthused about a bit closer up. Looks very much like a car one, doesn't it? In fact, a lot about this reminds me of a car. Uh, price on the road, and this is where it lets itself down, I think, 9199 um, which I think is, you know, quite a lot of money for a scooter. OK, so there we are. So, uh, comfort, luxury, protection, storage, and practicality. That's what this is all about, I think. And as I say, as uh, the white actually is growing on me as I look at it now, but I think uh, you get the choice between white and black, I'd probably take the black, because the white just shows the dirt so much. Right, there we go, that's enough uh, yapping about it. Let me jump back on, see if we can find a slightly faster road, and uh, we'll carry on. Alrighty, so like uh, all scooters, as I say, she won't start with a stand down, so that has to go up. You turn her on, and then you have to hold the brake to start her. But of course there's a danger, because it's always effectively in gear, if you just turn that, you'll be off. So what you mustn't do is go and rev it to have a listen to the engine noise. By the way, the engine on this sounds lovely. It's uh, not obtrusive whatsoever. It's just got a nice sort of turbine-like buzz about it. All right, let's uh, make our exit from this car park then. Go and find ourselves some faster roads. Not too far from the uh, M40 motorway here. So we're gonna head on up there and see how the bike does sort of top speed on the motorway. Just while I'm making my way up to uh, Faster Road, must just say thanks very much to Suzuki UK for making this bike available to me for the next couple of weeks. Already really enjoyed riding it. Such a shame that scooters get such a bad vibe or rap in this country and they're just not seen as trendy. Oh hello, what's that little scooter there? Because uh, they really are a lot of fun to ride. If you've not ridden one, don't poo poo those who do until you've tried one and then tell me you didn't enjoy it. Ah, white van man, of course. Good day to you, sir. One of the other super comfort features about these big maxi scoots, and this isn't unique to the Suzuki, is just these massive footboards. It means you can get your feet out the front if you want, give your legs a bit of a stretch, or if you're feeling a bit sporty, you can tuck them up sort of underneath you, a bit more bike-like, and that feels more natural to me as a regular motorcycle rider. But uh, if you are on a longer journey, it does give you the chance to stretch out if you want to, which is great, absolutely fantastic. What a beautiful day today. Look at this, it's saying it's 21 degrees C. This is uh, a Saturday after a Thursday that was 5 degrees C. What a bizarre country this is in, uh, in springtime. It can go from snow and ice and cold to beautiful summer's day in a couple of days. Alrighty then, M40, here we come. Let's uh, give the big Bergman a little workout on the motorway and see how she handles that. So very quickly up to speed. There are 70 miles now already and there's loads more to go. It really is quite an engine for a 650. Right, we're all clear to join. And at these sort of speeds, really stable. I'm gonna uh, just pop the windscreen up to its highest position. Okay, so the windscreen's now at its highest position. Let's just come back into this lane actually. And uh, I am getting some weird turbulent effects on the top of my head. Nothing too bad. I mean, I'm in a bubble of calm just here. 
so no issue at all and I want to put the screen down there we go it doesn't move down too much but actually I'm getting that weird effect that you sometimes get with bikes that have big screens where the, where the air I imagine is tumbling over the top of my head and hitting me in the back and it's sort of sucking me forward slightly it's not as marked on a bike like say the big uh, BMW RT but uh, it's definitely there. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a deal breaker. It's not going to get on your nerves. It's not difficult. I'm not fighting against it. You're just aware that there's a little bit of force on your back pushing you forwards, which is kind of odd, isn't it? When you would expect the wind to be hitting you in the face. But anyway, on the motorway, absolutely no problem at all. Actually, with the screen up in the fully up position, I've now got my visor open, as you can probably hear. And there is absolutely no wind here at all in this bit. It's a bubble of calm. So you can ride along here, I'm doing 60 at the moment, uh, no problem at all. Let's just uh, see what she's like overtaking. Wind her up. Oh yeah, she's got absolutely loads more to give. Is this Astra going to pull in or am I going to have to overtake him as well? No, nope, I think we're going to have to do him as well. Yeah, you could do some big comfortable miles on this at high speed. On the motorway, no issue at all. Oh, what a comfy and relaxed way it is to ride on two wheels on one of these scooters. Uh, I'm always saying that there's no such thing as a bad bike anymore and I really can't find anything about this that I don't like. I mean scooters may not be your thing and maybe the looks don't uh, do not do it for you. I'm kind of jury's out on the looks for me personally. It's a bit beluga whaley for me. But actually in terms of riding it, the bike is faultless. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I suppose the only thing that I've found is a bit of a nuisance is when you're fiddling with the switch gear here, particularly this screen up and down, I have to take my hand off the throttle, so I slow down a bit as I fiddle with this. But that's a very minor point, and because it's a scooter, you don't slow down a lot. The brakes work well. It's got loads of power. It's got the most amazing wind protection. I love things like all the storage with practicality, the heated grips are great I know because I've used them in earnest, as are the heated seats, all come as standard on this. Oh, I suppose the only other thing that's uh, not so good is the suspension, now I'm back off on a slightly bumpy road here as you can probably hear, the suspension is a bit crashy, that's the only thing that I can find about the bike that I don't like. I haven't ridden, ridden that many scooters, this is probably about the fourth one I've ridden. Uh, the third, or sorry, the fifth one I've ridden, I think. The uh, third Maxi Scoot. And I think I can honestly say without a doubt this is the best scooter I've ridden so far. As I said at the beginning of the, uh, the review, this has been kind of the market leader for a number of years and I can completely see why. Light and agile, joy to ride, loads of go. Yeah, like it an awful lot, except for the price. That's the other downside. Anyway, as I say, I've got this bike uh, for a few weeks. I'm going to get to know it. I'm going to ride it in all sorts of conditions. I'm going to ride it as much as I can to really uh, understand what the bike is about. And uh, then I'm going to bring you my sort of long-term living with type review. So if you're interested, if you're in the market for one of these sort of maxi scoots, then do stick around and stay tuned to the channel uh, for that. That'll be coming up soon. And of course, there'll be loads of other videos as well. If this is the first time you've been to my channel, then thank you very much indeed for sticking around till the end of the video. I don't just do bike reviews, but I do all sorts of other stuff. I do bike tours, I do stuff in the garage, uh, I do product reviews. I even do the odd live stream once a month and news reviews of the uh, UK biking press. So uh, if that sounds like your thing, do hit the subscribe button. It'd be great to have you along. All right, that's it for this time. Until next time, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.